Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Alexis, for anybody who doesn't know, welcome if you're new or welcome back if you have been here before. I am the author of A Journey Into Truth, Unveiling Life's Secrets for Truth Seekers. And this book talks all about the last six years of my life, the things I've been through, the adventures I've been on, like going into the jungle to do ayahuasca, and also some of the teachings and experiences I have picked up along that journey as well so more information about that book can be found on my website at www.vibratetocreate.com and you can also find me on instagram at vibrate to create and this book will be available for pre-order on november 2nd 2021 and it'll be available for purchase on february 2nd 2022 here on Vibrate to Create, I talk about all things metaphysical and spiritual. I also talk about my own personal life experiences and the, the awarenesses I've come to because of those experiences. I also make reaction videos to things like spiritual teachers, spiritual teachings, philosophical, sometimes inspirational videos. And I also make entrepreneurial videos letting you guys know how to self-publish your own books. So if you are interested in that kind of content, you can always click the subscribe button or hit the notification bell to be notified of when I post new videos so you never miss a video. On today's video, we're going to be doing a reaction video to a TED Talk and this one is called Allow Things to Unfold and You Will Find Your Purpose in Life. And in my book, I talk about purpose and I am always open to understanding new viewpoints and new ideas about how to find your purpose because that is just how we learn and everybody has their own viewpoint based on their own personal life experience so let's watch this video i hope you guys enjoy and let's do the thing so this is allow things to unfold and you will find your purpose in life by peggy oki i think that's how you say it let's start recording saying, oh my god, while I was visiting with some humpback whale researchers in Alaska. The guy on the deck shouting, it's a whale! <laughs> That's Captain Andy, who happens to be a humpback whale researcher, with quite some enthusiasm, even after seeing hundreds of humpback whales. <laughs> and I've had a large number of encounters with dolphins and whales myself, and I still feel very excited when I see them. Orcas, the largest member of the dolphin family, stay together their entire lives. Sperm whales, I am a sperm whale groupie. <laughs> they are the world's largest toothed mammal. They possess the world's largest brain. They can dive to depths of 2,000 meters and hold their breath for up to an hour. Mm. But what really touched me the most about them is I was learning about their behavior is that even in fatal conditions where their lives are in danger, they will never abandon their injured or sick. As I was studying animal behavior, scientists were coming out and saying that play is a sign of intelligence. And here we are with dolphins surfing, another connection that I feel to these, these beings as a surfer myself and seeing dolphins as I'm surfing and they're surfing ways too. Whales also surf. Imagine a school bus dropping in on a wave at Pipeline. <laughs> It's happened. <laughs> if that's not enough to impress you about cetaceans, I, there's many stories of dolphins in encountering humans. And this is one from Vangare in New Zealand 12 years ago. A lifeguard, father of three, had his three daughters out swimming for practice off of, of Ocean Beach, 100 meters out, when seven dolphins approached them, slapping their flukes, circling these swimmers, almost as if they were hurting them. They weren't afraid of dolphins, so they just kept swimming and thought, oh yeah, this is pretty cool. 
But a lifeguard from the shore saw what was going on. He thought it was really odd, too, and he decided that he was going to go check it out. Got on his little boat, went to just outside of where the dolphins were, and into the water, and what did he see? A three-meter-long shark, a great white shark. What a great day to have dolphins swimming around you. In the 20th century alone, nearly three million whales are killed. Many of them are still endangered. In the early 80s, thanks to protests and public outcry, the International Whaling Commission announced that in 1986, they were gonna have a moratorium on commercial whaling. A victory. We saved the whales. I remember that day. I, I remember that time that, wow, the whaling was gonna end. Despite the millions of whales that have been killed, there's never been a known attack of a whale on a human. Imagine a world without war, revenge, or retaliation, one of forgiveness and compassion. I pondered the wisdom of whales, and I thought, what would it be like to look into the eye of a whale? So I created this painting of a gray whale's eye, and then in less than a year, on Christmas morning in 1999, while I was surfing a great spot down in Southern California, catching really fun waves, and I paddled back out and sat on my board waiting for my next wave, a gray whale, 15 meters away from me, just 15 meters away, lifted its head up out of the water like the periscope of a submarine, looking around, and it looked at me. Our eyes met, and I was just ecstatic. I was blown away. I had no fear at all. This whale so close to me. But I was just in awe. And then the whale just went back underwater, and right next to it, another gray whale surfaced, raising its huge arching back out of the water, and just going back underneath, and they disappeared. I knew how rare that experience was, that it's very rare for a whale to come that close to a human in their own environment. And so I felt I needed to look into it. What was going on with whales at that time? Little did I know that that experience was actually going to be changing my life. Mm. I found out that despite the moratorium, when the whales were supposed to be protected in 1986, that they were still being killed. And uh, numbers of up to over 1,800 whales were being killed every year between Norway's commercial whaling activities and the scientific whaling of Japan and Iceland recently joining in as well. In 2007, the Japanese government announced that they were going to Antarctica to kill 50 humpback whales. As an artist, I felt I needed to do something about it, and so I came up with the idea of painting a portrait series of 50 humpback whales based on photo identification records of actual humpback whales sighted off of Antarctica. The markings on hum humpback whales are as unique as the fingerprints on a human. These are sentient individual beings that I wanted to somehow help. And so I did this art series, which may have seemed a, a bit obsessive. I was wondering if people were gonna think, oh, she's really crazy. But actually, the show was quite well received, and I was really glad that I was able to do something like that. I also try to raise awareness and appreciation of cetaceans by doing large paintings of them, such as for whales. This is an oil on board that was one and a half meters wide of a sperm whale fluke. And it's big, but a sperm whale is actually twice the size of that. This particular painting caught the attention of the Santa Barbara Whale Festival organizer, who invited me to come up with children's whale art activities at the Santa Barbara Whale Festival. So I thought of origami whales. What about a goal, something meaningful with this, this effort? Okay. 1,400 origami whales to represent the number of whales that were going to be killed in that year. It seemed like a huge endeavor, but through the whale festival, we got children coming and people of all ages folding origami whales. We got halfway there and working with animal welfare organizations who posted information about my campaign on their websites. People from all over the country of the United States, people from all over the world started sending me origami whales. And I reached that goal and then was provided the opportunity to present these whales to the International Whaling Commissioner of the United States. So how am I gonna bring these whales to Washington, D.C. in the most visually impactful way? I'm not gonna show up with two big plastic bag holes of origami whales. 
how about a plexiglass cylinder of all these origami balls as if they're, they're kind of in a display tank or something. And I thought, oh, no way. These animals swim, you know, 50 miles a day, and they're just such beautiful things that, that should never be kept in, in, in captivity in a tank. So then I thought of a curtain of origami whales so that each individual whale would be recognized. When I shared the idea with my friend, she said, let's do it at my house. And six other friends came for an entire weekend and we hand stitched these, these origami whales into a strand. And that's the first curtain of origami whales that went to Washington, D.C. I learned about the Maui's dolphin, the world's smallest dolphin, which is unique to New Zealand. And it's also <coughs> critically endangered. In 2006, learning that there was only 111 of these dolphins left, I decided to create a curtain of origami Maui dolphins through Maui's Dolphin Day. But 111 being such a small number, I wanted to get attention to this, this, this issue, and so decided to create a curtain of 1,111 Maui dolphins so that the 1,000 Maui dolphins would draw some attention. People would go, wow, what is that big thing of, of paper dolphins? And then right beside it, this little curtain of 111, just to show how relatively few are left. This curtain was exhibited at the Te Papa National Museum of New Zealand for three months, and then it went to the Waikato Museum in New Zealand for two months. I mm. felt, wow, this is really great, working with the children of all ages and having our exhibit in such, such fine places. It takes a lot of people, hundreds of people, folding origami whales, thousands, and lots of volunteers. But I was feeling very frustrated about the lack of information getting out about whales being killed despite the moratorium when they're supposed to be protected. So in 2006, I came up with the idea to create a curtain to represent the number of whales that have been killed. That was 25,000 in that year. But it was an ambitious endeavor that I, I felt I needed to take on. And as 2007 was approaching, that number grew to 30,000. But I said, if I get that many whales, I'm going to make a curtain, and I'm going to bring it to the International Whaling Commission meetings in Alaska, which I did. <laughs> Since then, I've exhibited the curtain three years in a row at Whale Day on Maui. The curtain is exhibited inside of two massive festival tents joined together and the numbers keep growing. It went to 32,000, 34,000, 36,000, because each year I update the curtain to represent that number of these magnificent beings, each paper whale representing a whale, a real whale that was killed that should have been protected. People of all ages have entered, thousands of people into the exhibit. They peek in and they, they see wow. the sunlight on the whales and the, the air flowing through the curtain with all these colorful whales, and they're not quite sure what to expect. And as they walk through this, this long maze of whales and read messages on them and realize the numbers that they've just walked past, some people come out feeling a bit overwhelmed and in tears and thanking me for what I've done. And I feel really grateful for that opportunity to, to work with people, to create art that has meaning mm. and art that empowers through participation art that has purpose. Mm. I've had the honor of meeting some of the volunteers of the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society. Here's one of them. And Sea Shepherd Conservation Society volunteers, they go out to some dangerous places in the world, including Antarctica. They get in their ships and literally get between a whaler ship and a whale, putting their lives on the line with direct action, which is something that very few people would be willing to do. In 2007, I invited Captain Paul Watson to view my exhibit of the origami whales curtain, and he came out to another event a few months later and gave me this Medal of Honor. I was really thrilled that my work was being acknowledged by somebody who does some of the most dangerous work to save whales while I'm doing something on the other end of the spectrum working with kids and people of all ages to raise awareness for the whales. A few years ago, as I was being inducted into the Skateboard Hall of Fame, one of my friends referred to me as saving the world one whale at a time. 
I'd like to think that everybody who has participated by folding origami whales and helping me st stitch these curtains has been a part of that. Lots of people can have passion. That You don't have to be passionate about sea whales and dolphins. It's turning passion into action that can make a difference in the world. I never imagined that the Berlin Wall would come tumbling down, but some passionate people did. They took action and it happened. Mm -hmm. I never imagined that, that nations across the world would ban circuses from using wild animals. Some passionate people did, and it happened. I never imagined that with one remaining female black robin, a New Zealand black robin, that left, that that species would be brought back from the brink of extinction. Some passionate people did, and it happened. What sort of thing do you feel passionate about that you feel you could make a difference in the world for? This summer in Raglan, while I was teaching the Whales and Dolphins Ambassador Program, one of my students, 12-year-old Ayla, asked me for some advice. I said, follow your heart with vision and actions. Create your own folds, and you will connect with your purpose in life. <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That was such a beautiful video and just seeing how passion for something and following through with an idea can cause so much change in the world and this is something I talk about all the time is this ripple effect and I have a video called the butterfly effect it's a reaction video to the butterfly effect documentary and it talks about how every single action that we take can it does create massive ripples out into the world meaning every single encounter you have with whomever you have like any conversation any organization that you create anything that anything at all it creates change in the world so at the end of that video he says by you watching this video your life has changed because you've spent this time watching this video and this time could have been spent doing something else you could have gone out and perhaps you could have run into trouble if you went out if you were not watching this video or perhaps this video will cause you to be late to be somewhere and then what because you're late you'll meet the love of your life like it's like thinking about how every single action we take can cause change in the world and this woman just by believing in herself and just by having a lot of heart and a lot of care about a specific cause and then believing that her dreams and what she was wanting to accomplish could happen and then actually taking the journey and the like running the marathon and actually taking those steps to finally see it come to its full fruition and i'm sure when she first began that one project when she first had that whale come out of the water and look at her i'm sure she never would have imagined that she would be creating it would turn into this big old maze where people could walk through and see all of these um this whole art exhibit and that it would end up impacting so many lives and that it would move people to their own action and then that she would be standing up in front of a bunch of people doing a TED talk moving even more people to action and then who knows what change that caused in their lives so really I really believe that everybody comes to this earth with some kind of gift with something to give to the world, with something, some kind of purpose, whether that's that you want to create a business making t-shirts or you want to do some kind of activism like this woman did or like I'm doing, making YouTube videos or a book to help inspire people to live life more meaningfully or joyfully. really having that belief that anything is possible i think i feel that it can move worlds it can change it can ripple out to so many lives and really 
believing that it is possible and not getting caught up in oh how big is this going to get or oh how important will this be to the world but just understanding that even just taking that one step has already caused massive amounts of change even if one person watches your video and becomes inspired to create their own action or to take their own journey to take their own search into knowledge about this subject and then causing change in that way or becoming inspired to make their own activism and their own organization so just really believing that every action you take is important to the world and then taking action like if you look at like what is her name Greta Thunberg I think that's how you say her name I don't know everything about her but I know she was very into environmental activism and really passionate about it and she's really young like I'm like less than teenager or maybe preteen or something and she was so passionate about speaking about this and she would sit in front of a specific building I think with like a sign and she would just stand out there by herself to kind of protest against um like for climate change I guess and just that one action beginning with that one idea it spread out to so many people who joined in on her one action and imagine how many lives were affected from just that one person having that one idea and having that one passion and that one love and purpose for something in life and then I'm sure I'm positive she never thought it would turn into what it turned into and uh, that is a very interesting story and I'm not saying necessarily because I know I'm not super into like climate change and like that is not something I'm super passionate about or have felt the purpose to learn more about so I'm not going to speak on those issues or like act like I have the solution for them but um, there are other things that I'm very passionate about, like very passionate about helping people to live more joyfully and to live more happily and to find their purpose and meaning in life, whether that is finding help in creating change in the climate change or the global warming or whether that is um, teaching people spirituality or giving your ideas and your knowledge based off of what you have learned in your life and in my past six years my whole purpose and my whole passion was to understand understand to uncover the meaning of religion the deeper truths within all spiritual ideas and to really understand the nature of reality and the nature of what happens after reality and what is the actual truth and really trying to uncover those things so that gift, that gift of being able to, and I never thought from the beginning of that that I would end up wanting to teach people about it, but that purpose of really feeling like I need to uncover this thing, I need to explore, I need to look, and then I need to uh, experience and search for the truth of this that led to steps that led to steps that led to steps that led to meeting this person led to meeting this person and then led to these videos and led to the book and all the changes that happened in my life and it's like just following that one idea one tiny little idea and following through can lead you to making mazes of thousands and thousands and thousands of whales and thousands of people who were passionate about the same thing you were passionate about that they decided to help in on this and to join in on your cause and then all the people who walked into that exhibit and felt moved who knows where their lives were changed because of it so just really following your purpose following your passion following your gifts following even if it's just like I feel like I really need to read this book and then reading that book that could be the one step that leads to the change in your life that leads to something like this so yes follow your passion follow your purpose if you don't know what your purpose is or what your passion is you don't have to know 
my in my life i did not know what my passion or my purpose was all i knew was that i needed to understand about spiritual ideas all i knew was that i needed to experience i needed to uncover i needed to find more knowledge and somewhere along the journey the passion and the purpose uncovered itself i did not search for it i did not try to figure out like what is my meaning in life well that's not true because it, i was very like trying to figure out what exactly I'm gonna, am i gonna do with this that's why i did an ayahuasca ceremony about it but really i feel like at the beginning it was not about trying to find the purpose at the beginning it was just about uncovering and towards the end of it it was more like okay what do i do with all this and that was when I did the ayahuasca ceremony. And now, here I am. Your purpose will find you. You don't have to find it. And just taking small steps. Take small steps. If, it's, if something interests you, smell it out. Go find it. Because, or go follow that tiny little trail that's calling you. Because it could lead to a massive change and a super super duper fulfilled life and happy life because you are following and living in your life's purpose and that that is a beautiful thing so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you guys have any comments or questions you can leave them down below in the comments or if you have something you'd like for me to react to next you can always send those to my email at vibrate to create at gmail.com and you can also find me on Instagram at vibrate to create If you want more information about my book, you can find it on www.vibrate2create.com. And thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for being a part of this and for being interested in learning what I have to say. So thank you for listening and I will see you guys next time. Bye.